morning, bonjour, bonjour. Thank you all for being here today. The gun violence that is plaguing our neighborhoods must stop. Meeting with families, members of the community, and victims in recent weeks has underscored for me the importance of taking action to stop escalating occurrences of gun violence that has been creating havoc on our streets, in our neighborhoods, and communities. A few days ago, I met with a mother. Her name is Stacy, and her daughters, Janiah and Javaya, who unfortunately fell victim to gun violence. This incident took place this summer in Scarborough, causing much fear and anxiety in my community. What Stacy wants for her children is really what everyone wants, and it's simple. That action is taken. Her daughters, nine and five years old, showed me their scars with bullet wounds above their right ankle and stomach. And while the scars have yet to fully heal, the emotional and the psychological scars are unknown. And while this is happening in our neighborhoods, we know that school is just around the corner. I wonder what these girls will tell their classmates about their summer. This heartbreaking story is just one that I am sharing among many others. I heard from a number of families and community members, enough is enough. Gun violence must end. The Ford government's decision to put more money into policing is not going to solve the problem. We need to limit access to handguns so that communities are safer and that we protect children. We need to start taking real measures to reduce violence in our cities. In 2008, the review of the Roots of Youth Violence report that was written by Liberal MPP Alvin Curling and Justice Roy McMurtry painstakingly detailed the links between limited social and economic opportunity and gun violence. The Liberal government responded by focusing on programs that served youth. Investments in youth training, in employment, in mental health, in post-secondary access, all are ways in which we can make real change and one that is lasting and positive. We must allow youth to grow to their fullest potential. We owe it to Scarborough's nine-year-old Janaya and five-year-old Javaya, to Toronto's 18-year-old Reese Fallon and 10-year-old Juliana Kosas of Markham, and all those who have been caught in the crossfire. We owe it to them to stop the flow of bullets in our communities, our streets, and our neighborhoods. That's why I'm supporting the City of Toronto's call to address the issues of handguns. I'm responding with a bill for Ontario. It would allow Toronto and other municipalities to ban the sale of ammunition should the bill pass. All governments must work together to fight this horrific destruction of our neighborhoods and streets where mothers, are afraid to allow their children to play in playgrounds, where children are afraid to sleep or dream because of nightmares. We can't let this take over our neighborhoods. We have to act now. Gun violence must end, and it must end now. I would now like to introduce Neil Price and uh, Natalie De Rosier. Neil is uh, a community researcher. I have worked with him in Scarborough on, so, on the social determinants of health. And uh, he is also the author of Community Assessment of Police Practices Report on Carding. And my colleague, Liberal MPP Nathalie de Rosier of Ottawa Vanier, was the president of the Law Commission of Canada and the Dean of Civil Law and common law at the University of Ottawa. So I would like to um, ask Neil to come forward and to speak.
Good morning. I'd like to thank MPP Hunter uh, for her leadership in introducing this bill. Guns and ammunition are the lethal hardware that are often used illegally to cause injury and death in our communities. It is therefore uh, pertinent and important that we want to find a way to reduce access to these materials. And this bill proposes one way to do just that. I call on all members of the House to pass this bill at the earliest opportunity, knowing that the safety and livelihood of our communities depend on it. I'd like to make uh, two additional comments. First, I join others in calling for the immediate end to the offensive language that has been used to describe people engaged in the recent street violence. When leaders use terms like sewer rat, thugs, etc., they conjure up offensive and racist stereotypes that harm and denigrate whole communities, not just those who are involved in street violence. This is an acceptable, unacceptable use, rather, uh, of language that has no place in a serious discussion about a serious issue. Uh, lastly, I'd also like to say, while I fully support uh, this bill to reduce uh, ammunitions in our communities, the sale of ammunitions, we cannot view it as a panacea, and I think the minister, uh, pardon me, MPP Hunter would agree. Uh, approaches to reducing gun violence must be comprehensive, evidence-informed, and long-term in focus. We need a sustained public health focus that looks at the underlying causes of this violence, which MPP Hunter has uh, mentioned. Uh, we need to look at the state of our social housing, for example, which is sorely in need of repair so that it can be livable and safe. We need to look at the state of our schools to ensure they have the adequate resources and the adequate teacher training uh, to do an effective job working in our communities. We need a long-term focus on the rehabilitation of people leaving incarceration in order to ensure that they have successful reintegration outcomes. And we need a meaningful and candid refocus on the ongoing need to improve relationships between police and impacted communities. Countless research has shown that gun violence is rooted in social and economic inequality. This bill and all other efforts to reduce gun violence must be contextualized by that irrefutable fact. So I thank you this morning and uh, I encourage all members of the House to support this bill. Thank you. I am here uh, in my quality as justice critic for the Liberal Caucus, and I'm very happy to support my colleague MPP Hunter in this endeavor. This bill is premised on two principles. The first one is that we must act to prevent violence, and secondly, that we must respect municipalities. The bill give the, gives the power to municipalities to ban the sale of ammunition and it certainly does allow the municipalities to create exceptions, for example, for police officers, for training facilities, or even for shooting ranges if they so desire. But what is important here is it's a one step in a large effort to curb violence. I think we know, and I think it's been said uh, this morning uh, very eloquently, how important it is to contextualize this violence and ensure that we endeavor to look at it in the global way. So I think all the investments that we put in mental health, the investments that we put in reducing equality are all endeavors that we continue to support. What makes weapons lethal is the ammunition that is in them. And I think that's why this bill is necessary to actually prevent the uh, arms to become lethal and cause the damages that they have caused. I want also to uh, link this bill to other aspects of public health. We know uh, that in suicide prevention, we of often uh, support the idea of minimizing access to guns. We also know that in domestic violence, uh, the presence of guns, the presence of ammunition, is also an element that compound uh, the lethal nature that of, of the violence. Uh, 
Je suis heureuse ici d'être, d'accompagner ma collègue euh, MPP euh, Hunter dans sa présentation de ce projet de loi privé qu'elle déposera cet après-midi. Et je le fais en qualité de critique en matière de justice pour le caucus libéral. Nous savons tous que l'approche face à la violence dans nos villes nécessite une approche globale, mais certainement, il faut diminuer l'accès soit aux armes à feu ou l'accès euh, aux ammunitions. Le projet de loi qui est présenté cet après-midi fait simple, seulement ça. Il autorise les villes, dans la mesure où elles le désirent, à interdire sur leur territoire la vente euh, de, de la munition. Ils peuvent aussi, évidemment, créer des, des exceptions pour euh, les, les, offices, les, les policiers ou d'autres euh, agents de sécurité. L'objectif, évidemment, c'est d'agir dans un esprit de prévention de la violence et de s'assurer que nos villes continuent d'être sécuritaires pour tous et toutes. Merci. Merci. So the City of Toronto motion has called on the federal government uh, to ban handguns, and, um, and that's something that is in the federal jurisdiction. Uh, as part of that motion, they've also asked the province to ban the sale of ammunition. So the bill that I am putting forward uh, responds to that request, and should the bill pass, it will give the City of Toronto uh, the ability to ban ammunition sales, as well as other municipalities that choose to do so as well. I recognize that the issue of gun violence is one that is deep-rooted. Um, as uh, Neil Price has really uh, so um, authentically explained, that it, it is de deeply rooted in inequalities and uh, social injustice. And those are the aspects that we all have to work in a coordinated way to address and to uh, create um, a, a society in which everybody has an opportunity. Every parent has a hope for, for their, their young one as they grow. And uh, we have to ensure that there are supports in school, in the community, uh, to support young people so that they choose uh, more positive pathways for their lives and for, for their future. This bill uh, will give municipalities the tools that they need um, to fight uh, this horrific occurrences that are happening uh, throughout our communities. There was a similar incident uh, to the Alton Towers incident that you were talking about just a couple of days ago in North York at, uh, I think it was Tree Sparrow Way, I think it's with Leslie and Finch. Have you seen the video? What's your reaction to it? And right near a playground, mm -hmm. what's your reaction to that? So my reaction is that the incidences and the occurrences of gun violence are becoming more brazen. They're happening in daylight. They're happening at playgrounds, on school grounds, and um, and this is uh, this is this is just disheartening. You know, when I visited uh, the playground in Scarborough where those two girls were shot, it was absolutely empty. 10:30 in the morning, no children playing on a Saturday morning. The the mother commented, like, this is like a ghost town. And, you know, if we have a society where our children cannot play freely in playgrounds, that should concern all of us. So, you know, we have to take steps to uh, reduce access uh, to, to ammunition, uh, which, uh, you know, as, as MPP De Rosio has said, uh, creates the, the weaponization of those, uh, of those, um, of, of those, um, those, those uh, arms. The video that I'm talking about from a couple of days ago, the one that was caught on the security video and it was in broad daylight, Have, had you seen it? So the, I haven't seen your specific video, but I have worked for many years um, within the community, whether it's at Toronto Community Housing uh, or in at community organizations. And, uh, and what I know is that due to the, um, the brazenness of these daylight occurrences, um, these incidences that are happening on playgrounds, the effects of social media, and, uh, and really allowing um, uh, individuals that take, take part in these activities uh, to really to showcase what they have done uh, is increasing those incidences in ways that are becoming more and more dangerous to our neighborhoods. And so we have to take action to, uh, to stem that flow of ammunitions and to reduce those incidences. Do you think 
um, more security cameras in facilities all around would be helpful as well to catch these people who are the perpetrators and things like that. Obviously, the one that we're talking about the other day was caught on security video, but should there be more, an enhanced security video around TCHC buildings, municipal buildings, so on and so forth? Enhancements of, uh, of security and the use of CCTV uh, and other technologies uh, are, are part of the solution, uh, but they are not the whole solution. Sometimes they fail. Uh, sometimes they can be manipulated. So we have to you know, make sure that we work in a coordinated way. Uh, but certainly technology is, uh, is part of a broad spectrum of solutions. Pourquoi est-ce que euh, donner aux municipalités l'autorisation de bannir les munitions, comment est-ce que ça peut aider à réduire la violence armée? Bien, les ammunitions, c'est ce qui rend euh, l'arme particulièrement létale. Alors, ce qu'on veut euh, s'assurer, c'est de diminuer l'accès aux armes à feu. Alors, d'interdire la, la vente des munitions, ça rend plus difficile l'accès aux armes à feu. Donc, c'est dans une approche plus globale de réduire l'accès à ce qui rend les armes à feu particulièrement euh, dangereuses et qui peuvent euh, tuer la vie. Alors, tuer le, des personnes. Alors, c'est dans cette perspective-là, une perspective de, de prévention, euh, de diminuer l'accès euh, aux armes à feu, de rendre plus difficile, finalement, euh, l'accès aux armes à feu. Son commentaire, Mme Hunter parlait de, des investissements qui avaient été annoncés la semaine dernière par euh, M. Ford pour les services policiers. Et euh, elle disait euh, que ça ne règle pas le problème en soi. Donc, ça fait partie de la solution, mais ce n'est pas tout. Euh, je pense que on reconnaît, euh, tout le monde reconnaît que ça prend une approche coordonnée, euh, beaucoup d'investissements. Ce qu'on propose ce matin, c'est... Euh, un peu pour bonifier l'approche qui a été euh, prise la semaine dernière pour dire c'est peut-être bien d'investir dans les services policiers, mais euh, une autre façon de, de diminuer la violence, c'est aussi de rendre plus difficile l'accès euh, à la munition ou, et finalement aux armes à feu. Que si c'est banni à Toronto, ils vont aller l'acheter à Mississauga ou à Ajax? C'est certain que ça rend, bien, ça rend plus difficile, évidemment, l'accès, la, mais on, on imagine qu'éventuellement Mississauga et Ajax euh, pourraient, euh, elles aussi, euh, bannir euh, l'utilisation ou la, la vente des munitions. Euh, ça donne le pouvoir aux municipalités de, de se situer, puis je pense que les municipalités euh, ne sont pas tous pareilles. Il y a des municipalités dans le nord de l'Ontario pour qui c'est une solution qui, qui ne serait pas acceptable. Mais certainement, je pense qu'on se rend compte que dans le sud de l'Ontario, je pense que le maire de Toronto l'a dit à plusieurs reprises, pourquoi est-ce qu'on a besoin d'une un, arme à feu à, à Toronto? Euh, S'il y a des gens qui sont des collectionneurs, ils n'ont pas besoin d'ammunition, s'il y a des gens euh, qui aiment, euh, ça serait possible, par exemple, de, de créer une exception pour, euh, les, euh, pour la, la, la formation des policiers ou d'autres choses. Alors, je pense que ça donne une approche qui peut être ciblée et euh, c'est ce qu'on cherche à faire, donner des outils aux municipalités pour mieux se protéger. Well, thanks everyone for for coming today and uh, for uh, for your support of this uh, this very important uh, bill and um, and we have to do all that we can to uh, to end gun violence in our cities and uh, in our neighborhoods um, and provide supports for families uh, and communities uh, to prevent these incidences from occurring in the first place. So thank you, merci.